What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are here live. Episode 14 of Flashback Pink Slips in Madden 20. The most exciting episode to kick off a new season. And that's the draft. The draft is always huge. We're here at the 2005 draft where we hold the number 15 pick. Uh, for this episode, I'm kind of like working around the house right now. We're building the deck. So uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to get in and play gameplay. But we're going to get through the preseason. We'll sim a little bit of games in there. Try to try to test out some of our new players depending on who we get. Looking at the draft, here's some quick rules as we have the marshals on the clock. Um, nothing too crazy. I, I feel like the rules that we established in the last draft worked out well. So essentially, we have to draft a player in the round that they're projected. I can't just, you know, uh, let's see here. We'll go in the second round. Give me, give me a free. Uh, okay, there we go. Nick Collins. Nick Collins. We see him as a first round true talent. You're like, well, shit, I need, I need a free safety. I might as well just overdraft. Reach for him. Can't do that. That's going to prevent us from getting a, a two overpowered draft. Uh, another rule is that for undrafted players, the... Uh, who's it? I'll get Ryan Fitzpatrick here. Okay, Ryan Fitzpatrick is an undrafted quarterback. If I really want Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm going to have to draft the player based upon what their talent grade is. So Ryan Fitzpatrick cost a seventh. Um, and we got some fullbacks here. Like John Kuhn. I really wanted John Kuhn. I couldn't draft him in the sixth round. I couldn't draft him in the seventh round. I would have to draft him in the first round so that when it comes to the truly elite undrafted free agents, we, we can't just cheese our way and get all of them. Um, but the biggest thing for me, like setting all these rules into the draft, is because we don't want to just have the insane draft every year. I don't want to have a whole seven picks worth of first round talents because then our team gets too overpowered. But in the same regard, that's not really that much of a worry for me anymore because we are losing more games with... With the four games per episode, we're simming, it's out of our control. We're losing more games and losing more players than we ever have ever in any Pink Slips franchise. So you can never really have too much depth. Like, how many how many good young players have we truly lost last season? Anquan Bold and Wes Welker. Uh, a bunch of guys who are going to develop and be amazing players. They, they, they're gone in, in, the, in an instant. So when all is said and done, when I look at my draft hall, even if it at face value looks pretty damn overpowered, at the end of the day, we have no idea what the future holds for our squad. And we don't know, uh, you know, who's going to be here, who's going to be gone, who we're going to win, who we're going to lose. So without further ado, let's get in this draft. Let's just see who's going first overall, and then we'll send to our pick at pick 15. It's probably going to be Alex Smith, which it is number one pick out of Utah, even though Aaron Rodgers was on the board. So we're up on the clock at pick 15. Okay. So we got Aaron Rodgers, but we have Eli Manning, who's now a superstar X-Factor. And if we get Aaron Rodgers, he's just going to be the top poachable player on our roster. Doesn't make the most sense there. We got Roddy White at wide receiver. We could use Roddy White. I mean, let's look at our roster. We get Rod Andre, X-Factor, David Boston, but how old is he? 28, 27. It's not too, too bad. Roy Williams, 75 star. We could, yeah. We could definitely use a Roddy White. I mean, we could use a guard, potentially. We got John Runyon in free agency, but he's, he's and, and Shannon Sharp. These guys are veterans at this point. That's Runyon, 30. 31. Shannon Sharp's 35. 37. So, looking at where we really need a pick. We could use a nice running back. We could use a guard on the defensive side. We could use a D-tackle. We could use a free safety. We could use another linebacker for sure. Maybe a third corner. So kind of looking at the board here, understanding that we sh everything is saying just don't be an idiot draft Aaron Rodgers, and I'd much rather play with Aaron Rodgers as my quarterback. We have committed to Eli Manning, and that is a friction that is only going to snowball into probably something, you know, 20 more episodes down the line that I'm just going to have enough. Roddy White could actually be a nice pick. We got Heath Miller, Mike Patterson, and Logan Mankins. Roddy White is mid-first. Aaron Rodgers is obviously going to be an early first. Heath Miller... Mid first, Mike Patterson actually played for the Eagles. Mid first, Logan Mankins early first. It's really going to be between Roddy White. You know, there's an outside chance for Aaron Rodgers. It's really between Roddy White getting a third wide receiver or getting a hopefully a starting guard. We'll get the guard. It's an ugly pick, especially with Aaron Rodgers on the board. But uh, I mean, Logan Mankins, one of the all-time greats for the Patriots. We'll draft him and Logan. Oh shit! Number one in true value. We got him at 15. 80 hidden dev. I don't know if that's superstar dev trade, whatever. But the unsexy pick turns out to be the pound for pound best player in the draft. That's one hell of a start here. So look at the second round. We can draft anyone that slipped out of the first round. Benson, Cadillac, Williams. We kind of need a running back, but 
you know, the value's not there. Maybe they're still there in the third round. We could look at it. For second round picks, there's like kickers and shit. There's not a lot here. And the third round looks sick. Like we got Frank Gore, OJ Otagwe, the Canadian. I love that. Justin Tucks in the third round. Evan Massett, Richie Incognito. Man, it'd be awesome to have Richie Incognito. We might have to trade out of the... There's no one worth picking. There's no rules about us not trading players. Um, I don't know. What do we got? What, what kind of offers do we get? Future 2022 is our draft, even though it's a 05. Is there any... We could recoup a second round pick next year. A second and a six. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Why not the UDFAs? There might be UDFA with a second round grade that we'd have to... We could draft here. Hopefully there is. Go the other way. Let's see what we got. John Coons, Leonard Weaver, Cam Wake, Jay Ratliff. Oh, we can't get you. Cam Wake, unreal. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely, there we go. Second round. We are drafting Cameron Wake, defensive end, Penn State, 69, hidden dev, number 40 in true value. Getting him at 47 probably could start for us. It's gonna be open competition with him and Raheem Brock for the starting DN spot. So here in the third round, again, things are getting kind of tight. I have no one scouted within the third round. A couple guys are slipping. There's, there's still not a lot, a lot of name value. So let's kind of look at our draft board here. Who is UDFA? That is a third round grade. We can get Brandon Browner, and that's it. So sure, we'll get Brandon Browner. Now in prison, but a member of the Legion of Boom. Comes in 66, hidden dev, 72 overall in true value. Getting him at seven. I mean, these aren't finesse moves. Like, look at the value. If, if we're getting guys that are consistently, like, top 20 true value, no matter where we're picking, then I would say, yeah, it's getting a little cheesy. But the dev trade is fine. He has some name value. But in terms of the draft, you know, we're, we're just pretty much getting guys at the value of where we're picking. Fifth round, we don't have anyone that fits it for our UDFA, so we have to actually draft. Um, we got Marlies, uh, you know, I think Brandon Jacobs is probably going to be the funner, funner option. It complements our backfield. We are looking for a power back. Uh, it's the only guy I really recognize in terms of name values. Kyle Horton was a backup. Maurice Claret had some, uh, you know, he's a very polarizing college football player. Tried to bend the rules in college football. Charlie Fry. I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, we needed a power back. You're not going to get a better power back than Brandon Jacobs. 6'4", almost 270 pounds. Comes in 62 with a hidden dev. Definitely reached here. Number 171 in true value, but he's coming in. 88 speed, 90 acceleration. That trucking. How does he have A trucking, but it's only 77? Fifth round again. Like, I mean, I'll, look, I have no one even scouted. If, if I heard of them, they would be already on my draft board. So we're pretty much just going to follow this. We're probably going to get Leonard, Lorenzo Alexander, and Ryan Fitzpatrick to finish one out. So we'll get Jim Leonard here, who's now the DC, I think, of Wisconsin. Actually, an emerging. Uh, College coach. Might get a head coach and go sooner than later. He's solid depth. Sixth round, we're going to get Lorenzo Alexander, who came on really late in his career. 62 hidden dev, 165. We actually get a good pick there. Very well rounded. But you know, he was kind of like a special teamer until like the last like three, four years of his career with the Bills, where he became one of the better utility linebackers in the National Football League. And then obviously, we're going to get this because we'll probably get his face scan. He's going to have a ridiculous beard. The best backup you could ever want. Ryan Fitzmagic, Fitzpatrick, 60 hidden dev. Really, really not a lot. I, I, I'm disappointed. I mean, this is a weak draft. 06 was not particularly a strong draft. But, you know, I, I don't like, as much as I eliminate all the cheese and all the overpower, I, I would like to, you know, draft guys in the given round, not just get a bunch of UDFA guys. But that's just the nature of the beast this year. We got, you know, a couple guys in. Brandon Jacobs was like our worst pick because we actually picked him at his round. Uh, I'm happy with Ryan Fitzpatrick, though. Nice little backup option. Could be. A fun spark plug if Eli Manning ever goes down to injury, but we'll just knock on wood there. So for our draft recap, we actually had an extra seventh round pick when I took a flyer and actually turned out to be, if I would have scouted him, I probably would have been unable to draft him, but it was James Butler. Came with 67 hidden dev. I remember him playing for the uh, Rams, I think it was, more of a special teams ace, but hey, that's actually really good value. We got Ryan Fitzpatrick, Lorenzo Alexander, Jim Leonard, Brandon Jacobs, Brandon Browner, Cam Wake, and Logan Mankin. So debatably, we got a, you know, look at the values. Not that overpowered. The dev traits help, but you know, Logan Mankins, Cam Wake probably will see some some playing time here as a as a rookie. Other than that, you know, it kind of sucks. Especially we missed out. Like Trent Cole was there as an Eagle fan. I would love to have Trent Cole. Or an Eagle fan. I'd love to have Evan Mathis. But 
you know, it's, it's not a bad draft at all. We got some great guys with us, some upside. I have to get through four preseason games before the week one opener against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the revenge game to try to get back Wes Welker amongst any of the players. We got the Jets, Bears, Redskins, and Falcons. So we're just gonna sim through it. Probably just play a little bit of offense. Let Ryan Fitzpatrick slang that rock. All right, wasn't recording. It's still preseason for me too. Fitzpatrick hit, believe it or not, Brandon Jacobs for like a 70 yard touchdown pass, which I wish I had because was hilarious. And hopefully sooner or later we do get the face scan in there for a couple of those guys. I don't know who would probably have one in Madden. I think Fitzpatrick for sure, probably Cam Wake. But uh, man, I wish I got that. Tutty, let's throw it in here to, I'll oh, come on, skip. We gotta hit Shannon Sharp just for the, for the goddamn memes. Where's he at here? Okay, he's in the slot, top of the screen. I'm going him all the way. Boom, leads him too easy. Oh, how got yeah, oh, he's yeah, he's yeah. giving it the preseason. Uh, and so I don't want to get too excited. Uh, I don't want to put uh, anything uh, in front of But damn it, I'm going to get excited. Here we go, Willie. Great route of the backfield, bud. Calico, man. One of the greatest combine warriors of all time. Gets his first career touchdown. Does it count as the preseason? Does it matter? It's over. I mean, this game's definitely over. But this is, this is great. Flexing the muscles. Fitz magic. Having, like, the greatest preseason rookie debut quarterback performance of all time. Dropping a near 60 bomb on the New York Jets. A team that we... I don't know. We played them last year. I can't remember if we beat them or lost them. I think... Uh, I honestly can't remember. Cannot remember. I'm just trying to think of my roster. Who who feels like they came from the Jets? Maybe it was a loss, but it felt good as a preseason. Going to get some backups here. Five touchdowns, 400 yards for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, there's no star. There's no players that could be earned, but Eli did not play well. Fitzpatrick threw all over them. Calico 96. We got 94 for Shannon Sharp. His debut game in an Oiler uniform. Lily over 100 yards. Brandon Jacobs had that 54-yard touchdown that I wish I was recording because it was hilarious. Uh, two picks. Troy Polamalu, Ruff, and Kalmus also had a pick. Half sack for rookie uh, Lorenzo Alexander. It's a great start. Everyone's healthy. I'm gonna quickly sim this one. See how well the boys perform under the bright lights. We put the 50 bomb. We know what we can do in the preseason. I want to see how the rest of the team Handles himself. How do they handle the business against the Chicago Bears down 14-7? Uh, look at, I mean, obviously you'd like to see another 40 ball. It's not going to be, a you know, we're still, in terms of the NFL landscape, where our teams that we have a really, we're probably one of the better young teams in the National Football League, but I still think we need a little bit of ways there. I mean, we enter this 05-06 season. I think we're probably a cusp, a fringe playoff team at this point. It's going to be, can Eli Manning continue to take a big step? Can he continue to not... You know, put the team in bad positions against really, really tough opponents. But we saw last year. I think the turning point last season gave us team belief. As it looks like we we're going to be able to win this game by three to go two and on the preseason. The biggest thing was when we were able to hang our own in that Manning Bowl. Eli versus Peyton, we put 50. They put up 47. But we did enough to win. Uh, looking at today, Ryan Leaf got a little bit of run out there for the uh, Oilers. Touchdown. Pretty clean game. Eli Manning, much better performance. We had a touchdown there. Chris Brown. David Boston, Shannon Sharp on fire, dominating the preseason at 37 years old. Get another 47 yards and a touchdown there. Touchdown for Ashley Lilly. He's actually had a great start to the preseason as well. Troy Palomalo, the team nine tackles. Two sacks, William Joseph. One for Spice Adams. A interception for Shantae Spencer as the Oilers move to 2-0 here in the preseason. Third preseason game, trying to go undefeated. We got the Washington Redskins here. You know, the Redskins are a solid team at this point. This would be a juicy matchup. I just want these new matchups. It's it, The biggest issue right now with Pink Slips for me, now that we're losing and, and the element of like, well, if we draft too good, then our team's going to be winning too many games because that, that's thrown out the window with how many losses. But the one thing that is annoying that if if I had to find the hiccup in Pink Slips that I, I think could be retooled is how the divisional games work because it just comes a point in time that once you get into year five, year six, unless those teams in your division, like I'm looking at the Marshals because they were the worst team in the league. Unless these teams kind of like keep retooling and getting great draft picks, 
th- th- these teams are going to get picked dry. You know, before, sooner, and later, if we establish ourselves as a dominant program, the teams within our division, we're just going to keep mopping the floor with them. And, th- and there's going to be a very, very small talent pool. Like right now, when you play Jacksonville, when we play the Marshalls, I don't, like, it, what happens if I win? I'm going to get, like, a 70 overall play. There's no new exciting guy that we could be able to add to our squad, which is kind of lame. As we throw it deep here on fourth and inches, deep. Or I think that was from Malcolm Floyd. Comes up short. Our first blemish on our preseason record. Horrible game around. 23 to 20. We fall to the Redskins. The three players here. I think we're gonna have to, you know, stash old Brock Lesnar on the practice squad. Thanks to Madden. Definitely great recommendations here as to who I should cut. Definitely was really thinking about getting rid of Andre Johnson. Come on. Nah, now we need OJ Santiago. God, or T- Tam Hopkins. Fix your AI. Final preseason game, three and one is. You know, I'm not someone that that puts a lot of stock in preseason games. Even in real life, you know, the Eagles. There was a meme a little bit during the Chip Kelly era that we're the preseason Super Bowl champs every year because we always look dominant. I remember like Bradford would have huge games. Mark Sanchez would look good in the preseason, but three and one in the preseason would feel pretty good. You know, a great way to roll with some momentum. And you know what way not to roll momentum? Is to get absolutely skunked by the Atlanta Falcons. So we're coming back big time in this fourth quarter. 22 points in the fourth quarter. But unable to get the ball back in the hands of our offense. Great second half charge here. Ryan Leaf. You got Phillip Rivers and Michael Vick doing this. That's a ridiculous quarterback combination for the Falcons. But uh, Ryan Leaf, 200 yards. He played well. Definitely maintain his spot. Willie Parker, 48 yards, two touchdowns. We got not a big 93-yard bomb for Ashton Lee, who's stepping up for sure, especially losing on Wes Welker. We lost Anquan Bolden last year. Two young guys we hope could take the step. Guy like Ashton Lee stepping up is going to help a lot. James Butler might have earned himself a starting spot here at free safety. Eight tackles and interception. Like seeing that. Cam Wake getting a sack and a TFL. We finished 2-2, two and two, but, you know, I like that fourth quarter. 22 points in the fourth quarter. That's a lot of momentum for our backups. Guys getting confident. They're going to be happy in practice as we get ready for the kickoff of the 05-06 season. Just about do it for the episode here, fellas. Getting ready to kick off. Whoa. That, sk- <laughs> that schedule. Okay. Uh, to kick off the next episode, we have a four-game stretch where we have the Jags, the Jets, the Colts, and the Colts. And the Colts are like our big matchup every year because it's man versus man. All right. There's going to be a lot to play for, especially three divisional games. That is definitely going to... Hey, if we want to compete this year, if we want to plant our flag in, a, in the belief that we can become a playoff team, this first episode, which will be probably what day's today? Friday. Today's Good Friday. It'll probably be out Sunday, maybe Monday. It's going to be a massive, massive episode. To, to, for the, to set the landscape early here for the AFC South. But to get a quick look at where our lineup is at, we're at 80 overall team. Uh, in terms of new faces, you know, should be familiar with all these guys. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think, has earned the backup gig, but I'm definitely keeping Ryan Leaf on the roster. Logan Mankins, our first round draft selection, will hold down the right guard spot. We got John Runyon coming over in free agency. Shannon Sharp had a pretty damn good preseason. I thought he made, made some, some splash plays. Really healthy one two punch at tight end. And luckily, you know, you can only have, I think, three X factors. So, uh, gotta find a way. How do I? How do I? How do I get rid of these? How do I? I'm gonna definitely swap it with Eli Manning. You know, when when push comes to shove, I think Eli Manning having ability is gonna be a little bit more important than Shannon Sharps. What is Shannon Sharps? Gotta get rid of that. It's the uh, football one. Let's give. Let's get rid of Shannon Sharps. Rack it up and give it to Jason Witten here. So yeah, Witten. Eli and Andre Johnson will be your X Factors on offense. Now flip it to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, again, all familiar faces for the most part. Uh, you might have missed if you missed the last episode. We did get Jonathan Vilma. He's a new center middle linebacker. We're gonna go with Butler over McBride. McBride has been productive, kind of throwing out his overall. Uh, he's been playing well, but Butler is a rookie with a hidden dev, so we might as well throw him to the Wolves. Cam Wake. I'm gonna go with a little bit younger. Go with a little more upside over Raheem Brock. And our three X Factors will be James Harrison. Antoine Winfield and Troy Polamalu. And of course, the best special teams unit in the National Football League. Superstar, Dev Punter, Andy Lee. And I think at 80 overall, we get the punter ability. I don't know what that is, but I've never had a punter with said ability. And I got the best kicker, the Pro Bowl kicker, Seabass, Sebastian Janikowski, a.k.a. I'm good from 99 yards. And he got a beautiful little face scan 
in there. So yeah, hopefully I'm going to send this roster off. Uh, there's the guys working on the Flashback franchise Discord. There's a bunch of them. Uh, my boy, brother Curse. And that's usually linked in the description, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm, I'm going to send it out to them. Hopefully we can get a couple of new face scans imported. I'm, like I said, if I had to think of one, I think Mankins might. I don't know. Like, you know, figure not every player in the NFL, not even everyone in Madden has a face scan. We should be uh, good to get going for Cam Wake for sure, which I hope we can because he's going to be hopefully a premier prominent player here on this team. But either way, shout out to all the hard work that they have been doing because making Eli Manning actually look like Eli Manning is pretty damn cool as my little controller here died. Look at that. He actually looks like Eli Manning. Sad Eli Manning face. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, the first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4. Saying peace out. Yeah. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit when you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent, I'm doing it big. Way too persistent on taking your bitch. Here comes a monster to scare all you kids. Y'all scared, y'all scared, what you running from? Y'all scared, y'all scared, what you running from? Y'all scared, y'all scared, what you running from? Y'all scared, y'all scared, what you running from?